That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. Milton cheats patients out of their money at this hospital, Pippa. Are you his accomplice? Yes, I am. Is this your definition of being useful? By abusing the sick and poor? No. It is my definition of getting out of this useless life once and for all. Why do you do it? Why not? Most of the sick who paid for a bed are already dead. Or will be soon. Don't you see the futility of all this? You put a price on hope. This goes against everything you swore to uphold as a nurse. Report me then, Dr. Reed. Report the little nurse and keep on lying about the surgical errors, the wrong dosages and diagnostics that we all covered for the sake of our colleagues. Whose idea was it? What difference does it make? We did it together, and I'm guilty as charged. Answer my question. It was my idea first even though Milton would say it was his, to protect me. Pepper, are you sure you want to leave this hospital? To become a nurse was a little girl's dream. But in the end, I don't feel that useful. I want more. I want to make things change. You should be proud of what you've achieved. This hospital represents hope for many people in need of help. Maybe you're right, but at the moment, I feel like we're just a cemetery waiting room. What steps are you prepared to take to feel more useful? I don't know yet. My sister believes that the real fight is in the streets nowadays. Maybe she's right. Maybe this is what I must do. If you feel that saving lives is not useful enough, perhaps it means that you've lost faith. On the contrary, my faith has never been stronger. Maybe we are all just too proud to face up to the fact that science cannot compete with God. And what about Milton Hooks? Does he share your point of view? For Milton, any change means more comfort and more peace. I disagree. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Miss Halcroft. I need blood, Doctor. Warm. Who are you really, Miss Halcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Tell me, Thelma, why do you feel so attached to Mr. Elwood? Why him? I'm... I I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. We've both suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting. Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. <laughs> Even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. No, for I am a vampire, Doctor. I'll leave you, mistress. Good evening. Evening. Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. Why lie about it? Come on. 
It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans. And it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. Reconstructive surgery has been very successful for some soldiers. I don't want to wear a bloody mask for the rest of my life. I'd rather stay here and just be forgotten. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. Goodbye for now, Mr. Damn. The pain. Hello again. Goodbye, mister. Fear and disgust on every street corner. Good evening, Doc. Please show me. Of course. Good evening. Goodbye. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. You, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. There is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. 
That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Do you need some? I have just... To... Then ask away. You mentioned something about a secret society. A brotherhood, if I recall. Could you elaborate? Certainly. I've been a member of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole for several years. We are pledged to monitor and report vampire activity in England as impartial scientific observers. That explains your nightly wanderings about the docks and the questions you ask. I feel it wasn't mere coincidence that led us to that part of town. There was something as yet unseen that set those chain of events in motion. Yet you don't fear me. And still, you know the monster that lurks beneath the civilized surface. The Brotherhood has studied your kind for centuries. We believe you are as supernatural as a lion is to a gazelle. Since I'm the one working for you, what should I know about Pembroke Hospital? Well, for many years, we have been the only medical facility in this part of town that people can rely on. We support the community here, as well as provide health care. Where do we stand today? Well, to be honest, we cope on a day-to-day -day basis. The first wave of the Spanish flu last summer took us by surprise. We lack many of the basic necessities needed. What do you expect of me? What we need is hope. You were a soldier. This is a war. This white coat's still a uniform. We fight to help the poor, the sick of the East End, the forgotten. Since you seem quite the expert on vampires, what could you tell me about my condition and how it came about? As men of science, our first step is always to start with what we know. Forget the myths, the hackneyed scrawlings and the penny dreadfuls. They do not scratch the surface of the truth you now find yourself in. The sun. The morning following my... transformation. Its rays burn me. There was pain, smoke, and my skin blackened. You will find there is very little that can kill a vampire, my friend. You have been offered relative immortality. The sun will most certainly hurt you, leaving you weakened and damaged. But it will not destroy you. Must I take a life to live? You are a vampire. You feed. And blood is the sole sustenance that can sustain your immortal frame. And only a living creature contains the nourishment you require. The man we pursued and slew in the canning factory, William Bishop, I believe, was he a vampire? He was a skull, technically speaking. The debate rages as to their classification. Some think them a subspecies of vampire, others something else. Where do... How do Skulls come into existence? The name means slave. The etymology may indicate that they are a lesser species of vampire. From what I know, vampires tend to despise them. Just for clarity, what differences are there between myself and a, a Skull? A Skull is easier to eliminate, Jonathan. Even if they remain formidable foes for the unprepared. Vampires... Now, vampires exist beyond the mortal realm.
We'll see each other again soon, Edgar. Flew took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <coughs> Mr. Rainfields, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <coughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. So it seems our Dr. Swansea does indeed have a fascination for creatures of our constitution. Dr. Swansea is a remarkable man. Dedicated, one might say, obstinate? He spent years compiling our bestiary. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Who would be so foolish as to threaten you, a kindred spirit? Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze, the blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. 
Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? Excuse my impertinence, your ladyship. This is not an interrogation. I assure you that this line of questioning is in your best interest. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Good evening, Milton. Good evening. I'd like to... Wise chalk. What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Please, calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. <laughs> How brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts lit a poor sod's vein. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's, whores, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. But I swear one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. Miss Jones. Mm -hmm. 
now. Well, if you... If you could just tell me why you were admitted. It's terrible, Doctor. What with a pain in my chest, coughing up blood, and I get awfully tired. Wouldn't be so bad if I hadn't lost my house and all. I see. No one comes to visit, you know. Not even my own flesh and blood. Have you noticed any suspicious comings or goings? It would be a great deal easier to make a list of things unsuspicious in this house of charlatans. Everyone here is very capable. I have not seen any instances of unprofessionalism. Thieves and murderers the lot. People have gone missing here, you know. Poof! Without a trace. Come now, Miss Jones. Surely it's not that bad. <laughs> have you no eyes? This hospital accepts all manner of souls, regardless of origin. The proper sick cannot heal. We're kept sickened by the refugees. I'll come and visit you shortly. Good night, Miss Jones. The patients and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. They have discussed on every the daily routine. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Have you seen a strange man visiting any of the nurses here? I've never heard of such a thing, Doctor. Do you know if any of the hospital staff have criminal backgrounds? The people who work here all come from very different backgrounds, Doctor. Just like the patients. Goodbye, nurse. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with that old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. She could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? No matter how you feel about her, Miss Jones deserves our help. Who says I don't care for her? Hate is what keeps the old crone alive. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins.
this hospital seems to be falling apart. But I'm in the circumstances, right. I'm willing to give you a good evening. I'm okay. Dead. Have you heard rumors about blackmail in this? No. Have you heard? No. I have to. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. Please, sir. I need help bad. What's going on? I'm blight, sir. Newton blight. I've lost my mate. Can't find him anywhere. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital. Please calm down and give me more details. Oswald and myself were both infantry, sir. We were en route for the hospital, but... Well, we had a disagreement. And Oswald ran off towards the canal. How long have you been searching for him? I, ca I can't go there. Too many rats by the water. Fucking rats. Can't stand them since the war, sir. Can't stand them at all. Don't be ashamed, Mr. Blight. Many soldiers who survived the trenches suffer from musophobia. I'll see what I can do for your friend. What can you tell me about yourself? I'm Oswald's best friend. We served in the same regiment, sir. We've taken care of each other since we came back from the front. This is a dangerous part of town. What are you doing here? We were looking for the Pembroke Hospital. He... We both need help. T treatment, I mean. To get some sleep. Just need to feel better, sir. What can you tell me about your friend? His name is Oswald Thatcher. We survived the war together. Oswald is nervous and quite fragile since we came back from the war. Where was your friend the last time you saw him? He went down by the canal. He didn't want to go to the hospital. I think he went to the sewers on purpose. So I couldn't go after him. I have all the information I need for now. If I find anything out about your friend, I'll let you know as soon as I can. Thank you, Dr. Reed. so many times. Oswald, you can't just die like this.
Thank you. 